In this video, we're going to take a look at the mild oxidation reactions of alcohols. So really important to note here, when we're talking about mild oxidation, this is different and separate from complete oxidation, which is essentially combustion. So you can have a complete oxidation of alcohols, and that will result in carbon dioxide and water as products. Um, if you're not familiar with combustion type or complete oxidation reactions, make sure you go back and watch the video on oxidation reactions. So here what we want to do is we want to look at mild oxidation reactions. So this is where we can control the oxidation of an alcohol to create other functional groups. Now, there's a couple of common oxidizing agents that we can use. The first is acidified potassium permanganate, um, and the other one is acidified potassium dichromate. Now, typically they're shown as H plus with MnO4 minus or H plus and Cr2O72 minus as the catalysts in this reaction. The potassium doesn't really do anything. It's just a spectator ion. So in um, this particular sequence of reactions, like I said, we can create different functional groups. So we can go, if we have a primary alcohol, we can do a controlled oxidation um, to produce an aldehyde. And then if we take that oxidation further, we can create a carboxylic acid. We'll talk about how to get one of the other or the other product uh, in a little bit in a little bit later in this video. Now the reaction's a little bit different if you have a secondary alcohol. And if you do a controlled oxidation here, you'll produce a ketone, and that's the only product that'll be formed. So it won't react any further than that. If you have a tertiary alcohol, no reaction happens. And so it's really important to be able to classify alcohols as primary, secondary, or tertiary, because then it's going to tell you if you do an oxidation reaction, which of the products we are going to create. So let's take an a look at a few examples and see how this reaction works. We'll start with primary alcohols. So primary alcohols, if we react it with an oxidizing agent, uh, so sometimes the oxidizing agent can be written as an O in square brackets, and but you should probably put in the proper catalysts. So I'm just going to use the dichromate one here, although we could use permanganate as well. And if we want to make just the aldehyde product, we do this with heat in a process called distillation, which we'll look at in a moment. And so if we were to do this heat and distillation, we would create the aldehyde. Now for here, the aldehyde that we're going to create is the two carbon aldehyde. So the number of carbons don't change, but the functional group does. Oh, actually, hold on a sec. There is no dash there. So and my eraser doesn't want to work. So we're just going to leave it like that. So that is our product, the aldehyde. Now, if you wanted to write this out and kind of fully balance it, you can put in um, as a reactant the plus O, and that'll help balance out your reactions because then you're also going to create water in this particular reaction. So if you're balancing it for balancing purposes, you'd put in the water and you put in the O. But for most of the time, you don't really need to include that. It's just something extra if you wanted to see it balanced. You could also fully balance these reactions too uh, by writing separate half reactions. So one half reaction would involve the alcohol going to the aldehyde, and the other re half reaction is going to involve your oxidizing agent getting um, going and creating. So with dichromate, it would create Cr3+. Or with permanganate, uh, it would be creating Mn2+. And then you would balance that particular reaction in an acidic uh, environment. So... You could try that if you want, um, that is a possibility. 
Now you can take this reaction another step further. So if we react this again with our oxidizing agent and uh, now we're doing heat and a process called reflux, we're going to create the carboxylic acid. So um, we are going to create this guy here, uh, C double bond O and then OH. Again, if you wanted to write this balanced out, you'd, you'd include the plus O as a reactant, just so that going from here to here with that heat and reflux, uh, that would create a balanced reaction. Okay, but you don't need to. Now, uh, secondary alcohols, when we react them with an oxidizing agent, so I'm just gonna put the O here because I just don't wanna write it out again, but you should put in specific ones. This is going to create a ketone. So the, here we go here. All right, and then the last one, tertiary alcohols, no reaction. So they do not react when you try to oxidize them. So those are our three, um, well, two reactions with uh, alcohols and then one no reaction. Uh, those are our mild oxidation reactions that can or can't occur. So the last thing we just want to explain in this video really quickly is what is reflux and what is distillation and why is this working in this particular reaction? So there are two setups here. Um, you could put your reaction in the bottom of one of these uh, bulbs or we call them round bottom flasks. Uh, because they have a round bottom and you put your alcohol in there along with your oxidizing agent. So that would go in in those particular reactions. Now a reflux reaction uses something called a reflux condenser. It's basically sort of a big long hollow tube where we input cold water in here and then it flows up and then flows out. So it's really just cooling whatever is coming up in the tube here and then condensing it back down. So in this particular setup, in re this is our reflux setup, um, we will basically not be able to isolate the aldehyde product. And so what we're gonna be producing is just the carboxylic acid in this particular reaction. In distillation, uh, the setup's a little bit different. So when you, uh, when you heat this up, you get it coming up here. And then um, what's really kind of neat about this is that the aldehyde can be distilled off as soon as it's formed. And so we have another condenser here. It's very similar to the re re reflux condenser. We, again, we got cold water coming in and out, so cooling this down. But as the aldehyde's being made, it's going to have... Um, it's going to have basically a lower boiling point than the equivalent alcohol and any other components in the mixture. So it's gonna evaporate up here. Um, it's gonna hit this tube and then condense and then come out here. So we'll be able to capture the aldehyde here, whereas everything else is going to stay in your reaction mixture. So that's how reflux and distillation work. Uh, along with our mild oxidation reactions. And that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.